Welcome to today's um, video, Embroidery Studio E4, What's New? In today's video clip, we're going to go over the new features of our new software program, version 4. So first off, I want to call attention to, um, to the screen, uh, to, uh, to a different look, a little bit more efficient for the end user, for the digitizer, or the embroidery shop. I'd like to bring to your attention that with E4, we do support 4K monitors. Uh, we have the ability to change the size of our icons, show them as large icons. And we also have the ability to turn on the labels for the various icons. This is a very nice feature when you're learning software. Everything is right there for you. You don't have to, um, you know, kind of guess or you have to hover over the tool to see what, or hover over the icon to see what the tool name is, although that is still available to you. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the large icons as well as the labels because it does clutter my screen a little bit. I am not running this with a 4K monitor. Also, I'd like to bring attention to our um, outline stitch types and our fills toolbar. This is new in E4, so it is organized by stitch type, outlines, and fills. So they're easily accessible when you're digitizing or editing your designs. We still have the ability to pick our fabric. And um, E4 is packaged with CorelDRAW 8. Also standard in the E4 program is the ability to convert bitmaps over to embroidery. That is something that was an extra cost element in our E3 software. So you do have the ability to convert both vector and bitmap images over to embroidery. I'm going to go over to the crawl side of the software. I'm going to bring in a bitmap um, since that is something new with E4 or something that maybe not all of you had in E4 or in previous versions. So the beauty of being fully integrated with Crawl, um, Crawl Draw 8 is that we are available to import every file type that Crawl supports. That gives you the ability to open up various types of graphic files. I'm just going to go ahead and open up my happy face here and place it on my screen. And it is a bitmap. I'm going to go ahead and just size it down just a little bit. If I turn on the lock, we're going to go ahead and undo that. Just scale them down just a bit. I've got them selected and I'm going to click the convert button. So very quickly, I've converted that bitmap. I'm going to go ahead and um, hide that background. And there's my, my happy face. So very quick. Um, again, this was a pretty good, a pretty good JPEG, uh, of course, just like in previous versions. So I can go in and, you know, edit my different, my different stitch types. We'll add some bulk compensation to the border. Wilcom with E4 has done a lot to the lettering portion of the software. We have 25 new fonts. And we'll scroll down. We do have a PDF available that will show you all the new fonts. Um, and we've also we have digitized 3D fonts that are available for puff foam digitizing. So all you need is your, um, your foam. So I'm going to go ahead and just type some text in. And we're going to go ahead and we'll just select our 3D block. Again, this is digitized for 3D foam, and I'm going to show you that after I generate the stitches. One other thing that has been introduced to E4 is font families for your true type fonts. So for those of you that have many, many 
two type fonts on your system. You are able to sort them by style or family. So if I wanted to look at all my serif true type, if I scroll down to the bottom where my true types are listed, it's going to show me all my serif fonts. So that's a very nice feature of E4. Also, if you scroll down just a little bit or you look down at the bottom of the screen, we have brought to the forefront within letter properties, lettering art. So again, remember the whole, whole thought process with E4 was to make things more efficient as well as creative. So everything is here for you. It's, you no longer have to go into different menus and select different features to possibly bridge or do some sort of enveloping to your text. So I'm just going to go and help select um, this one here. And I'm just going to make my text just a little bit bigger. And I'm going to go ahead and place it on the screen. And you see that the envelope is already there. I could reshape it, make changes to it. So as I said earlier, 25 new fonts. We can provide you with a PDF that shows you the new fonts available in E4 in e as well as all, all fonts included. And um, of those fonts, we do have a set that are digitized for puff foam embroidery. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in because this one here was done um, with one of the 3D fonts. And if I zoom in, I want to bring to your attention that the open areas of these letters are already capped so that the foam does not poke out. Also, if we look at the stitch properties of um, this 3D font, notice that the auto spacing for the font is turned off and the spacing is set at 0.2, which is going to give you a very, very tight fill which will perforate the foam. So again, new new fonts, um, lettering art brought forward. Again, very easy to use. I'm going to go ahead and remove my art. And there I have it on a straight brace baseline. So for this example, I'm going to go ahead and I am going to uh, just change my font to something different. Adele is a new font. I'm going to make this about 0.45 inches, just a little bit smaller. There we go. One other new feature is down in the color palette. If you see um, the colors that are being used in this design, you have a blue square in the upper left-hand corner denoting that that is the color being used. We've also introduced My Threads. My Threads is a very nice feature to assign the correct color code of a thread that you use in your shop to the design. Well, the software does default to the Madeira 40 Classic Thread, but as you see, there's various thread charts that get loaded when you load your software. So you can actually change this out to your thread if you're not a Madeira user. If I hover over the buttons down at the bottom, you'll notice that the colors that I'm using are dark green default, a yellow default, and the black default. If I click on match all, the software is automatically going to match the colors in my design to the correct color codes for my thread chart. So now if I hover over the green, it's giving me Madeira Classic 40 on its code the same for the black, and the same for the yellow. I can also click on the Hide Unused Colors, and it compacts my palette to show just the, the three colors being used in this design. I'm going to go ahead and close my thread so it's to not clutter up the screen too much. We've done a lot of improvement to the product visualizer. Let me bring it over from my other screen. There we go. 
We've added a lot of new products. One thing to bring to your attention is that all these products are high resolution. So I am going to go into accessories and I'm going to select the bib. And then I'm going to colorize my bib. So any of these that we've loaded for you, we can assign the color. You also have the ability to um, bring in your own products, but those products will be set in the color that you scan them in or take the photograph. So again, the product visualizer drastically improve, improved a lot more. Um, different products are loaded, organized by, um, by accessories, different style types. So we're just going to set this up as an example to show you a couple new features. So if this is a particular job that one of my customers is requesting, so this red bib with the little smiley face and then happy day, um, I can write in my E4 software, run through a simple job order form. Now the neat thing about the order form is that all the information that you save in the order is saved in your EMB file. The first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and save, save my design, and I'm going to call it um, Happy Day Bib. <coughs> and as soon as the file is saved, um, you're going to notice that the design name should populate over here in file name. My design is Happy Day Bib in the order. It shows the file name. I can give it a title. It could be the name of the customer, whatever you choose to make that title. I can also set a design status. So I'm going to set this one as requested. If you have quote numbers or order numbers, you're using QuickBooks, you can put that information in the next field. You could also set an order date, as well as a due date. I can enter um, the name of my customer. If there is a specific um, contact. You can add some sort of reference if you need to, and if possibly your sales rep went out um, to make the sale, you could put their name here. Next thing is going to be information on the particular design, so your product type. I'm going to call this Terry because that's the type of product, um, the bib that I bought. It's going to be center, and we'll say one inch from top. How many are being ordered, and then the product. So we're going to say baby bit, but you could enter here the name of the manufacturer or where you're purchasing these products. The color, and down below you could add color, size, and quantity. So if you were doing polos and it was an order of you know, black, blue, and red polos, you could specify the size and the color um, and quantity per item. And of course, any order notes that you have, anything that you feel that is important to the order. So within the design properties, I can create a very simple order. Um, and I can also go into the summary and I could tag this. So maybe I'm going to tag this design is smiles, um, happy, kids, whatever tag, tags you want to enter into the de design. Now keep in mind, whatever tag you put into the design does become searchable in our integrated design library, which I will be showing you in just a little bit. So the other place where we've done a lot of improvement is in our, in our approval sheets. 
So right from design properties in the order, I can print an approval sheet. Now when the sheet pulls up, you're going to see that it has changed. Um, so here's your approval sheet design. And down below, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. You're going to see that everything that was entered in my order is on the sheet. So the product type, um, the product, quantity, colors, where it should be positioned. I can also make changes to this. So here are my terms and conditions. Uh, this is already in there. I was just playing around to see if I could go ahead and modify it. So if you have different terms and conditions other than what we've put here, you can go ahead and make those changes. And if you notice, the terms and conditions down at the bottom also changes. Order quote PO numbers up here, the order date, um, customer's name, and who the contact is. So right from here, we can actually save this as a PDF. So we have brought that into E4. We can now make PDFs of our print sheets. And we can also send this via PDF. So there is no need to um, get a third-party software now to make PDF files and attach them to your email. You can do it all from within the software. And then your customer can actually sign it, date it, and send it back to you. So that's a simple order. All this information is held in the EMB files. If you shared one of your E4 EMB files with an order um, and you emailed it to me when I opened it in my software, everything that you put in the order, I'm also going to see. Another great feature of um, E4 is our integrated design library. The design library is available in all levels, available in the E4 platform, beginning with the lettering, the lettering version. So the design library does not require a database. It does not require SQL. Um, all your designs are quickly visible, and they are also searchable. So if I want to look for kids, it's going to search not only in my embroidery folder, but in all my other subfolders, all my designs that are tagged kids. I can also look up by phone number if I've tagged a design by phone number. And once I find my design, I can double click the design and it's opened in Embroidery Studio. So if you look right above the design pane, you'll see that all my designs are tabbed across the top, making it very, very easy to go back and forth if I needed to select maybe just a smile. I'm going to make a copy and quickly go into my other design. And I can go ahead and paste it in. So it makes it very easy. And I'm going to go back into crawl. And I'm going to bring up the same graphic, my smiley face, but I'm not going to convert it to embroidery. I am going to bring it over to the Wilcom side, and I'm going to show you some of our new digitizing tools. 
So we have added in the E4 software what we are calling graphical digitizing, which is built on the graphical software concept of creating shapes and filling them in or outlining them. So it's going to make the digitizing process, the manual digitizing process, much easier. I'm going to again just make him a little smaller. And this time I'm just going to go to Wilcom Decoration. I am not converting it. And it's going to bring my graphic over to my screen. So we have a new toolbar over on the right hand side, and it is called Graphics Digitizing. Now remember, your screens are modifiable. You can put these toolboxes, these tools, wherever you need or you can also hide them. If you're working with two, or in some cases three monitors, you can move your tools over to another monitor and just keep your workspace on your main monitor. So we have some new tools here. Um, we're going to come back to the open shape. But we're going to digitize the smiley face with close shape first. So if you can trace, you're going to be able to digitize because you're basically using your mouse to trace um, the shape. So as soon as I clicked in on my keyboard, it filled it in. Now I can change the stitch type. Remember, I want to fill this in. So here I have it to tell me. Now this being a closed shape, and now we've introduced graphics digitizing, I can go from a fill to an outline very quickly. So I'm going to get out of choose view just because it's a little bit easier to digitize. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to make holes within the design. We have a make holes or add holes. I'm just going to go ahead and I can go back and reshape it if I need to and make a hole. And then I'm going to go back to this close shape. And I'm going to fill the hole in. And I'm going to make this black and his face yellow. There we go. I'm going to put it in choose view. I can go in and reshape this. It's kind of messy over here. I'm just going to go ahead and add another node, maybe pull it out a little bit. So digitizing becomes much easier with E4. <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and do the other eye. and make it black. So now the smile, we're going to change the stitch type so both eyes look the same. Now if I was really digitizing this for production, I would be a little bit more precise. So now the smile I'm going to do with what we're calling a close shape. So I'm just going to go ahead and start PFing, not close shape, sorry, open shape. And I want this to be a satin stitch. So it's very quick to digitize with the graphics digitizing. It's also much easier than to explain um, the traditional input methods that we've used in, pers in previous versions, like the input A, the input B, the input C. It's easier for someone to fill in a shape and say, OK, I need to fill it or I need to outline it, and to think, what tool do I need to use for this particular element? Now, if you're used to our traditional digitizing, those are still available to you. Um, however, we've replaced the word input with column. So we have column A, column B, column C, and then we have complex fill, and fusion fill is now complex turning. 
So you do have the best of, um, of both worlds. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to duplicate the, the face or the yellow. And it is a duplicate, but I'm going to go ahead and change that to an outline. Now, I didn't want the eyeball to be outlined. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. And we're going to go ahead and make this black. So it's very, very quick to digitize with, um, with E4 and the graphical digitizing. If I wanted to add angles to the elements, I could do that. So the shape starts turning. So everything is just a click of a button and it's right there for you. Again, making it very, very efficient and easy to digitize either through conversion or um, manually digitizing. Oops, I didn't mean to move some of this stuff. We also have a new tool in E4 available um, in designing, which is remove overlap. So if you remember when I digitized, I need to get rid of these angles. There we go. Um, when I digitized this design, this hole I cut out and then did the black part on top. And this one I just did over top. With E4, I can click on an element that's sitting on another element and quickly remove overlap. And whatever is sitting underneath is going to be removed. So it's graphical digitizing. Um, we've also introduced some simple, simple shapes that you can use. You have some stars, hearts, there's a Christmas tree, whoops, a Christmas tree. I'm going to go ahead and just draw the Christmas tree on the screen. Again, because we're doing the graphics digitizing, my element can either be an outline or it can be a fill. E4 introduces some new stitch types. Um, so in this particular element here that I did as an open fill, I could select this new stitch called raised, satin raised. So what this is going to do is it's going to add about three to four layers of underlying satin stitches. Um, so it gives the design a little bit more loft. It's almost simulating puff embroidery without the foam underneath the stitches. I can do the same thing um, to the south side. And I'm going to do the same to the eyes because we also have a satin raise that we can use for the fill. Whoops. I think I had something incorrectly selected. There we go. So I want to go ahead and redraw this on the screen for you. And I'm going to go ahead and just speed this up a little bit. And if you notice, the screen is moving because it's going to move wherever that, where my current needle location is. So for instance, if I was zoomed in on this part of the design and I did um, a redraw, as the design starts redrawing, notice how the screen is moving on the, on the or the, the design is moving on the screen. It's moving with the current needle location. I can also move forward to the next color. So it's gone right to the black, which this is the spray satin stitch effect, or raised satin stitch that we have brought into E4. So notice various layers of satin stitch before it puts on that top stitch. It's going to do the same thing on the smile. It's going to give you a loft appearance. Now there are three or four layers 
before it does the top stitch, your stitch count is going to going to go up. But maybe you wanted to introduce something new to your um, to your customers, but you're not too sure about the puff foam digitizing. So this is this is a way with the gray satin to introduce something new into your um, to your customers to see if it's something that they like, and then you can master the art of digitizing or use the 3D fonts that we have available in our software. So we're just going to let this complete drawing so you can see um, how the race satin works because that is a new stitch type in E4 in the designing level. So we're almost there. We'll just go ahead and stop it. And of course, you can speed it up. So I'm going to open up a new window because uh, I want to show you monogramming, which has changed a lot in E4. Um, what we've done for you is we've given you categories of monogramming designs that you can use. So we have borders and ornaments, so these are a little bit fancy. Then we just have simple borders, so the monogram in the center and then a border. And then simple, which we would, um, which are the styles that were in our previous version of the monogramming wizard. We do have 23 styles available within the monogramming um, feature. So I'm just going to go into borders and ornaments, and I'm going to select this for style here. And as soon as I click on it, it displays on the screen, so everything is um, immediate. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change my letters. To my monogram. And notice as I'm typing here in the letters field, they are displaying on my screen. Now one of the really cool features um, in E4, we no longer have to break this apart if we do need to do some kerning here. So I'm going to click the reshape tool and just move my P over a little bit. Very, very nice. It's all there for you. So we can do um, fancy designs, borders and ornaments. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. There's simpler ones to use here. And then just the simple monogram. When you go into letters, as always, you can use any font that is loaded on your system. She could even use one of our 3D fonts, as well as any true type font that's loaded on your system. So a lot has been done to monogramming. We can also create within the design, the monogram designs, custom designs. So here's just a couple that I've done. Um, it's very, very simple to do. I'm going to just go ahead and Go into my recent. This is something new. Your recent files show up as, as thumbprints. Um, let's just pull up this little doggy. And I'm just going to do this monogram here. And we'll put in ABC. Maybe slightly too big. Yes, it's almost an inch. So let's go about 0.45. Oh, whoops. 
let's type something in incorrectly. So there we are. So I'm going to bring the monogram down here. And I'm going to assign it this dark brown color. Because I need to sign that I create. With the monogram, I can save it as the monogram template. And the next time I come in to my custom, I believe I have to close the software and open it up, then my monogram template would be here um, in addition to all the other designs. One more thing that I want to talk about before we um, we stop with the or we finish the demonstration of what's new as E4 is in team names. Um, we have added the ability to import CSV or text files. I'm going to go ahead and import my text file, and you see how quick that is. It's better than having to type all those names in. So you can request a CSV or a text file from your customer, wherever you navigate to wherever you stay in your system, and bring it into the software. That is the completion of what's new in E4, but as you see, we have um, added a lot of features that make things quicker to use. You don't have to hunt around and and um, try to find where different things are to do different things to your design. So we've made everything very efficient. And also with the ability to um, be much more creative with the additional you know, monogramming designs, um, lettering art that we've brought in, different features, the different stitch types. The job order form is something great that's always saved into your EMB file in the integrated design library, which allows you to search designs and view thumbprints and quickly open them is also a great benefit to E4. And remember, with the integrated design library, there is no need for a database or a SQL. So I hope you've enjoyed this presentation of Will Come Embroidery Studio E4, What's New? If you have further questions, you can call the sales line at 877-657-7500, or you can always email sales at willcomeamerica.com. Thank you for joining, and I hope you've enjoyed it.